All right, hello everyone. Welcome, thank you so much for joining the session. Hopefully you are here because you are a developer and you want to hear how you can develop code faster, better, stronger. Um, and you want to do that with uh, some new tools, Einstein for Developers and Code Analyzer. Uh, we are definitely going to be talking about non-GA stuff. Uh, so as you all know, Salesforce is a public competitive company. Please make your purchasing and investment decisions based on generally available features. Um, and now you've heard that. Uh, just quick introductions. I'm joined by my colleague today, Gordon Bacchus. Hey, I'm Gordon Bacchus. I'm a principal software engineer on the ID Experience team. We're responsible for the Salesforce extensions for VS Code. Okay. And I'm Vivek M. Chawla. I'm a principal ISV platform expert. Uh, I cover packaging and distribution, uh, enterprise scale, and our Salesforce developer experience. And that last bucket uh, means a lot to me. I've been writing code since, since I was, uh, God, I don't know, eight years old. And has this stopped working? Yep. Writing code since I was eight years old. And one thing that's always been clear to me is that writing code is, is hard. Um, when I start a new project, um, it's, it's like climbing a mountain. We'll get to that in a minute. But what we're gonna do today is we're gonna talk about what makes writing code difficult, um, how Salesforce is trying to make that better, Gordon's going to spend the bulk of our time actually showing you uh, in real time with live demos um, what our tools can do. We'll talk about a little bit of roadmap. I'll give you three things that you can do today. Like you can go home right after this session and, and, uh, and start playing with stuff. And then we'll let you go to your next, uh, next session. Okay, so I would mentioned that when, when I start a, a software project, it feels like I'm st standing at the base of a mountain. I know where I need to go. I, I want to go up. I want to get to the top but I don't really know how to get there. Um, what is the fastest way? What is the safest way? Am I gonna be going all by myself? Do I have to blaze a trail that other people need to follow? Um, There's so many different things that, that can happen. And when you're staring at that blank piece of paper, it can be difficult. Um, and that's because it, it takes a lot of hard work to you know, get to the top. And if we back away from this mountain metaphor for a second, Getting to the top really means um, a, a few things, right? It means that while I'm building, I, okay, let's try that again. Well, what it means is that while I'm building, I'm focused on performance, I'm focused on security, I'm worried about best practices. After I do all that building, I'm still not done worrying. I have to worry about the code being styled right. I have to worry about complexity. Is my code too complex? Not complex enough. Are there errors? And all of this is done in service of, of, of getting to that, that peak of having good quality code that I delivered as quickly as possible. Now, we're here because talking about the, the things we're gonna show you today because we're at an inflection point in the software development industry, right? There are challenges that we're all facing that we didn't have before. There's this explosion in apps. Everybody's got an app on their phone. Their, their, their devices, their cars, apps are everywhere. Um, these apps are very complex because there's all this personalization that we, that we love as consumers. Um, but as developers, that means we have bigger workloads and we're trying to, to, to do all of that in shorter time frames. Now, when you put all this together, um, it's a recipe for burnout. Surveys show that eight out of 10 of us feel burned out in some way. Um, at least some point. And so what the Salesforce platform team has, has wanted to do is, you know, we've, we've asked how could we leverage this, this explosion of advanced artificial intelligence to make life better for developers. And if we think about the, the pain points that happen in the software development lifecycle uh, uh, process, each of these represents an opportunity for change. And so our vision on the platform is to use AI in different ways to make life better for developers. Now, the vision that's showed here, some of it's forward looking, um, some of it's here today, and we'll show you the stuff that's here today. But if we can achieve this vision, it's gonna lead to a lot of things, 45% faster speed to develop, documentation much easier to make, 35% faster, Refactoring code becomes easier. You can do it in 20% of the time. And if we can achieve all this, then our productivity goes up more than 50%. And 
And this leads to a world where we as developers are going to feel more fulfilled because we are, are basically being elevated from coders to strategic thinkers. So this is our vision. This is where we want to go. Now I'd like to talk about where we are today. I'm going to focus on two tools that you could use right now to build better code faster. The first is Einstein for developers. Now Einstein for developers, this is a generative AI tool. It uses Salesforce's own LLM. And our intent is to help you build, build smarter, faster, stronger, but to do so in a trusted way. So what do I mean by, by coding smarter, building smarter? Well, essentially when you're paired with, with Einstein for developers, you get an AI powered pair programmer right out of the box. Einstein can help do a lot of the tedious things, which frees you up for the more strategic thinking. Code faster um, because this tool lives where you work, right? It's, it's it can be embedded inside of Visual Studio Code or Code Builder if you're using that. And, um, and essentially you're, you're using AI or Einstein is helping you right where you are. And finally, Code Stronger. Einstein's providing you with best in class examples of, of CRM code so that your applications can be built knowing you're following best practices, knowing you're following code quality. And all of this right now is available as an open beta. We have support for Apex, but there will be support for additional languages and frameworks coming eventually. Now, smarter, faster, stronger. What about safer? And that's where Code Analyzer comes in. So Salesforce Code Analyzer is a 100% free, open source, um, unified code scanner. It brings uh, two different engines together. Uh, um, we have kind of a fast engine that, that checks, you know, do, like doing syntax checking within single files. And then we also have a graph engine that understands the complexities of your entire code base and follows paths through. So you can, you can scan either fast or deep, depending on what you need. Now, what this means is that you can leverage these, these you know, industry-leading engines and over 250 rules to write better code, more performant code, more secure code, and identify problems before they, they get out into production. You can do that uh, in a couple ways. One, you can do it as part of your CI CD process. Code Analyzer is a Salesforce CLI plugin. It works on top of the Salesforce CLI. So if you're already using um, the Salesforce CLI for your CI CD, you can get right away into what we call secure DevOps with very little change. But what's more important for each of us as we're actually writing code is the fact that we've just launched as, as beta the Visual, code, sorry, Visual Studio Code extensions for Code Analyzer. This means that right in the IDE, you can check a file, you can check a, a code block, and you can get feedback in a really nice, well-presented form in the IDE. And with that, I've done enough talking. I want to turn things over to Gordon. He's going to show you a lot of this at work. Gordon? Thanks, Vivek. All right, we're going to hop over to VS Code. OK, first things, the setup for this demo. I'm using the DreamHouse LWC open source GitHub project from Salesforce. And we're going to uh, develop a new Apex method using our new tooling that we've been talking about in this presentation so far. So first, the setup. If we take a look at extensions, we can see that we have our Salesforce extension pack. This is what powers our Apex, LWC, our debuggers, all the good stuff that you're used to using inside of VS Code for Salesforce. We have the Salesforce Code Analyzer extension. And finally, the brand spanking new Einstein for developers. All these are available in the marketplace today. So from your VS Code instance, you can go and install them, give them a try. So in order to use Einstein for developers, you'll notice that I have this little Einstein icon in my toolbar. He looks nice and happy. That's because he's ready to be used. When you first install it, this will probably look unhappy. And the way to get around that is have your admin navigate to setup, search for Einstein for developers, and you'll need to toggle the enable to enable the service. You'll also be asked to accept the terms and conditions associated with the open beta. All right. Once your VS Code looks a lot like mine, you're ready to go. So the, what I've been asked to do today is I'm going to update this product con property controller class. 
my PM messaged me and said, hey, I need you to add a new Apex method. We're going to look for available properties. And she gave me some details. So if I open the Einstein for Developers sidebar, this is where I can enter a prompt. So I'm just going to paste in the request from my PM. So we've been asked to create an Apex method to return the list of available methods, order descending by price, limit by 10 records. So here I want to call out that Einstein to developers uses an LLM, and LLMs are, by nature, non-deterministic. What does that mean? That means you can ask it the same question multiple times, and it will give you a different answer. That's awesome when you're a developer, and you may like not like the first completion, so you just ask again. It's not so great for demoing in front of hundreds of people, but we'll in, make it work. In, in fact, Gordon, a uh, little behind the scenes, uh, there's a certain demo path. We might hit it, we might not, <laughs> um, and it's, it's interesting because that's, that's what you get from, from an LLM. It's non-deterministic. Exactly. All right, I'm going to click Ask. Uh, while we wait for this to come back, I'm going to call out that this can be used both in a local VS Code install as well as Code Builder. So however you like to work, uh, all these extensions are available. And all right, we got back our first completion. I can see it named the method get available properties. Looks like status is available. That's what I wanted. Ordered by price, limit 10. Excellent. I'm going to copy the code by clicking the Copy button. I'm going to paste it into my Apex class. And now this is where our different extensions come together. If I right click on the method, I can see that I have two new options here, one for scanning the current file with Code Analyzer, and the other for, the other for executing the Graph Engine path-based analysis. I'm going to kick off the, the analyzer. The graph-based analysis is better whenever you're analyzing how your different classes interact and connect with each other. And since we know this is a brand new method, I'm just going to do the simple scan. All right, the scan came back complete, and it found two violations. If I hover, I can see that the two violations are an apex.comment. We'll deal with that later. Uh, and then also a crud permission violation oh, in force user mode. I always forget this when I'm writing code, so I know exactly what that means. But I'm going to have Einstein fix this for me. I uh, also want to call out that if you whoops, open the problems view, it also reports the violations here. So if, you want to, if there are many violations in a file, this is maybe often a better view for like taking a look at what's affecting your entire class and how you can resolve them. And Gordon, real quick, this is, this is one of the, the really nice benefits of having Code Analyzer integrated with VS Code. Um, Code Analyzer went, went GA uh, earlier this year um, but just as the CLI plugin. And that CLI plugin, when you're seeing the, the results of the scan in the terminal, it, you know, it, it's harder to make out what's what. This kind of display where it's beautifully integrated within the problems, uh, uh, I guess, window or component of VS Code makes it easy to spot. Plus, you had all that hover tooltips. I mean, this is, this is why this, um, the appearance of Code Analyzer inside of VS Code is so important. Yeah. And it's a little hard to see here, but it also navigates you directly to the spot in your code where the problem exists. So this is standard VS Code behavior. It should act and behave like all your other tooling. So we just integrated directly with that. All right, let's solve this CRUD problem. So I'm going to come back to Einstein. And I'm going to say, add a new, I'm going to engineer my prompt to ask it to add user mode. Click Ask again. Uh, while that's running, I'm going to call out. You'll notice that I use backticks in my prompt. So the backticks are Markdown, and our Einstein for Developers LLM understands Markdown. So whenever you're specifying code in your prompts, be sure to use standard Markdown behavior. All right, let's take a look at the next response. This is not quite what I was looking for, but it's a little hard to read. So I'm going to update it and ask it to make it a little more readable. It didn't quite listen to my new line request. However, it did get user mode and the available. So I'm going to copy this code, because now I want to scan it again and verify that I've fixed my problem. OK, I've updated it. We can, I'm going to kick off the scan. And while the scan is happening, it's often important to go back and review the code that was generated. Like, let's ensure it actually is what it says it is. So I can see user mode was added. I can also see that status C is set to available. 
me clear this. Oh, and often don't forget to save because if you don't save, then the analyzer is not going to find the update. <laughs> Live demo, folks. <laughs> okay, while this is running, uh, another thing I want to call out is that our queries to Einstein use context to help it make better suggestions. So one thing you should always remember to do is open the file that's most important for the prompt that you're requesting. So in this case, it was the property controller, so that's what's open in my active editor. All right, so now I can see that it took care of my security issue, which is the most important. Uh, the other issue that's remaining is this Apex doc comment. We don't follow that coding convention uh, in our code base, so I'm gonna hover over the... I'm gonna... Select it, click R, light bulb, and suppress it for this line. All right, one more scan. Um, another thing about context is that you can include custom object names in your prompt. And when you do that, we will actually look up the fields and the connections and include that in your engineered prompt behind the scenes so that Einstein can be familiar with what objects you're talking about. All right, scan complete, zero violations. Perfect. I can now have some confidence that I have secure code that was generated with the Einstein sidebar. Uh, one last thing I'd like to show you is if we show the prompt history. So one really interesting thing, let's show the prompt history again. One really interesting thing about uh, large language models is they're trainable. But how do we get data to train these models? How do we get better completions over time? Well, one way is with your help. You can provide feedback on the generations that were supplied by the prompts that you write through our feedback panel. So and Gordon, I'm, quick question. When you had asked it in, the, in that last prompt to separate everything by line, yep. and it didn't do it, um, is that the kind of feedback that you, would, that you would give? That's exactly the kind of feedback I would give. I care, the more important it is to me, the more important it should be to our team. So okay. the new lines thing is important. I like, and actually I'm gonna try asking it again. Let's see if it'll do it. Yeah. This was one of those demo pass that we weren't sure how it was going to go. So it's, it's, actually, it's actually a great message. Yeah. And one, one little uh, prompt engineering uh, tip and trick is sometimes it matters what order you ask in. So copying and pasting is just as important now as it was when you're writing code. Uh, so I'm going to try moving it around and asking one more time. There we go. OK, there we go. So just because I changed the, like, it's always learning and how it takes the input and parses it. There's a lot of stuff going on in the back end for how that works. So sometimes when you change how you ask, it'll change the result. So Gordon, prompt engineering, it's a real thing. I it mean, is. It, it, it is a real thing. It's, it's part of how all this ends up working well. So now that I've asked for it and it actually did what I wanted it to do, I'm going to expand my prompt history here. And it's a little small on this screen. Normally, you can see all the things. But you can hover to actually see it in a pop-up. So in this case, I'm going to give it a positive response, add the comment, and say, perfect, exactly as asked. Send that feedback. And then I'm going to come down just a little bit further. And I believe this is the request where it did. Nope, that one did include user mode. Let's find one that didn't. OK, this is one that I asked it for user mode, but it didn't return it. So I'm going to give negative feedback here and say, should have included user mode as requested. Send feedback. All right. So yes, feedback is very important to us. It's going to help us make the models better. Please include that as part of your development flow. And thanks a lot. That's right. our demo. Thank you, Gordon. There are live demos, and then there are live demos. And when you don't know what's coming, it's all right, folks. So Hello. We're Hello. back. Testing. Can you hear me? All right. OK, so what did we just see? Um, we, we saw a formula for modern software development uh, using, uh, that ended up with high quality code. Gordon started by, by asking Einstein to generate code. From there, he used Code Analyzer to validate the code. It wasn't quite what he wanted, so he iterated. And all of that combined lets Gordon elevate from coder to strategic thinker. All right, best practices. We'll blow, Gordon actually talked through some of this. Um, the one thing I think, Gordon, that's, that's missing is when you did that first prompt, you actually you mentioned you just kind of pick, cut and paste what your, what your product manager said to you. So writing prompt, good prompt engineering, in a, in a sense, is like putting your PM hat on and, right. and trying to yeah. ask what you need. 
Um, and then Gordon, the fine tuning completions, maybe uh, the context you're talking about as well, but fine tuning completions, do you want to say anything on that? Uh, just be sure to go back and if you're, you're not getting exactly what you want, just continue to update your prompt. Try different things. There's lots of experimentation here. It's a very, like we're in the new world of AI. So try lots of things. It's not perfect today, but it'll get better and better as we go. Okay. Uh, for a code analyzer, hey, if you're going to use a uh, code analyzer with CICD, you want to run that scanner run DFA command. If you use it, the plugin, you can narrow your focus with the dash dash target flag. But honestly, use it from the IDE. You saw how easy it was for Gordon. That's really the best of the best practices. All right, get your cameras out. There's about to be a slide that has the, the QR codes to get everything that you need. Um, this is the roadmap. We're almost out of time, so you can photograph that. And this is the, the, the important one. So everything that we showed you is 100% free. Everything is available today. Follow these QR codes. You can get into the Code Builder beta. You can try Code Analyzer, uh, plugin, and extensions and you can get into Einstein for developers. Thank you so much. Uh, visit us in the platform park. All of these demo booths are there. With that, thank you so much.